Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Pastor Cliff here with the podcast broadcast of Goodness Gracious. Uh, we're here at Grace Community Church and we're learning about God's goodness and His graciousness in the lives of His people. And today we have a special guest with us. His name is Mike Laguerre. He's been going to Grace Community how many months now? <laughs> months, yeah. Uh, about three months, four months. Three, four months. Yeah. We've been having a great time. We yeah. we sip coffee together usually once a week. And mm -hmm. uh, when we can actually get into a coffee shop, it's a little different with this coronavirus going on. But, Mike, we're really glad that you're here. Thanks. And, um you most recently came from Cranberry Township, didn't you? I did, right? yeah, yeah, Pennsylvania. Uh, we just moved from Pittsburgh uh, back this last November uh, here to the sunny state of Arizona. So we are very much excited to skip out on that winter. Yeah, you and, and your, your your beautiful wife, Leela, and your two kids. We love those kids. They're just so great. And uh, I used to live just down the road from where you were in Cranberry Township. So as awesome. a pastor back there, back in the day. Um, but you didn't grow up in Cranberry Township. Did not. You grew yeah. up St. Yeah. Louis? Yeah, St. Saint, Saint Louis, Missouri. So uh, originally born in Florida, F Fort Lauderdale. Parents moved when I was four and uh, spent pretty much from that point forward uh, in St. Louis. So when, when you were growing up, mm -hmm. um, tell us about how you, you, when you look back and you look at that experience of growing up in St. Louis, was the Lord at work in your life at that point in time? Yeah, I, I would say. Um, I grew up uh, in the church. My parents took me to uh, church pretty faithfully as a kid. Um, Sunday school, Awanas. Um, you know, I, I would say I was a covenant child, you know, of that, of that time, but uh, I didn't I didn't have a moment of realization of my own faith until I was about 13 years old with a uh, uh, church youth group um, retreat, actually. And uh, so when I was 13 is when I, I committed myself to the Lord and uh, been, um, you know, following in his footsteps ever since. So mm -hmm. Now, have there been moments since then where you just have gone, oh man, the Lord, you're just speaking to my heart. Oh, I, oh, absolutely. Can you um, think of any of those times? Can you... Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's been, there's sometimes are more clear than others. You know, um, you know, there's been uh, undoubtedly some hardships. I know I've, I've talked to you about uh, my military. Um, there's highs and lows with that. Um, obviously, just in life in general, uh, with friends and family. Uh, but really, it's just uh, getting connected to the church body, uh, no matter where we live. You know, and so I think the, the more connected we are to the church body, uh, the higher the highs are. All right. That's for sure. All right. And you, you know, Mike, you, you, you went to high school in St. Louis. You yeah. went to junior college for a couple of years. And then you went to which university yes. to finish uh, it off? Yeah, uh, University of Missouri, St. Louis, uh, right there uh, in St. Louis City uh, for my bachelor's in business. So Fantastic. it took me nine years to finish. But you went into the military. Right. And uh, you were in that whole post 9-11 scene. Tell us a little bit what, about what that experience yeah. was like. Well, I wasn't the best high school student, uh, so I didn't have the grades necessarily just to jump right into college. And my dad, um, my parents separated when I was 13. And my dad moved away, but then moved back when I was 17, 18 years old. Um, and I think he moved back, now that I'm looking back, I know, he was trying to talk me into joining the military. And uh, so I, I did, actually, um, in uh, November of 2002. And that was, of course, after 9/11, and uh, but before the Iraq War started. So, you know, I joined. I joined actually originally enlisted as a um, lightweight vehicle mechanic, and then I went to basic training in July of 2003, and uh, AIT. And then at that point, um, I was I was definitely in. You know, um, I thought I was going to get out after six years. You know, I, when when you're that age, you can't imagine staying in anything longer than that. But I've been uh, in for about 18 years now. So. Wow. so you're still in? Still in. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, really terrific. Mm -hmm. But but you early on, you had some pretty rough spots. You, you feel okay talking about that? Yeah, I, I do. Um, yeah, it's part of my testimony. But when I was 20, 21, um, I met uh, a woman actually at a uh, church event, um, really hit it off, connected. And uh, we, we ended up getting married when I was 21 years old, but about a month and a half before I got uh, on my first deployment. And um, so I got deployed, I was gone for about 18 months. And then when I came back, um, unfortunately she wasn't the same person um, and she wasn't as committed to the marriage necessarily as I was. So 
um, that that fell apart, which was probably like I said, one of the lower of the lows, um, which you know yeah, caused me to turn to the Lord a little bit more closely. That's yeah, and what a rough experience as a young guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, trying to figure out relationships, trying to figure out life, trying to figure out the Iraq War, trying to counsel the oh, president yeah. on everything he needs to know. <laughs> he was listening. Mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so so you went through a really rough time, and and that fell apart. And uh, and then fill us in on what happened after that. Yeah, so it wasn't necessarily all easy. Um, I was still, you know, working full time, going to school full time, uh, trying to balance quite a bit, getting involved um, here and there where I can with my church. Um, and then, ironically, uh, one of my other friends we joined at the exact same time, got deployed, and he was home on leave from his uh, his his deployment mid mid uh, tour leave. And after like three or four days of playing video games and hanging out like a bunch of guys would at, in their mid twenties, we decided to go out and actually do something. And and uh, in the midst of all that, um, ended up meeting Leela um, uh, out with my friend John, and we hit it off and started uh, talking. But at the time, she wasn't a Christian, and uh, I was really struggling with that, being uh, so uh, drawn to her, but knowing that she wasn't sharing the same faith, um, and never recommended, but. Uh, more or less over a period of time, was able to um, share the gospel with her, and she came to Christ. So, isn't it exciting? Wow! <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we yeah. we not only have Mike here, but we've got Leela. Yeah. And she's fantastic. Yeah. So, how long ago was that? Uh, so we met in uh, 2008. Uh, so going on now, coming up on well, 12 years of knowing each other, uh, but nine years of marriage. And when did Isabella come along? So she came around in 2013. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. then you got Hudson and Hudson. And yeah, 2016. I'm telling you, these kids are terrific. They're, they're just fun. full of beans, <laughs> but they are so sweet. Yeah. And uh, you know, my wife's a fifth grade teacher, and if she she can pick up on kids and parenting like that, hmm. and these kids have great parents. What's yeah, well, been your secret? Whew, uh, you know, we. Well, it's one of those things. Um, it's one of those. It's by God's grace. I, I can't say it another way. You know, we're not perfect parents, and never will claim to be. But um, just, uh, you know, just loving on them, uh, just shepherding their hearts, trying to catechize them, you know, bringing them to church, and you know, just it's a multifaceted thing. That's for sure. It's not yeah. one, any one thing. Catechize them. It sounds something. That sounds like yeah. a medical kind of. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, but but you're. You, you know, yeah, teaching them how to love the Lord, teach them how, how to, to read the, the Bible, yeah. and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Yeah, what fun! So you know, as as a dad, as a husband and a dad, what if you could make, if you could ask the Lord for one thing for your wife and for your children, what would, what would it be, or what would those things be? One for your, we'll give one for Leela and one for your kids. Ooh, if I could have one thing for her. Um... Well, I mean, sometimes it's hard because she's so committed to the kids uh, and oftentimes stuck in the house with them. Currently, she's staying at home, so she doesn't get a lot of breaks. Yeah, uh, we're under quarantine. <laughs> we're under quarantine. Yeah, you know, quarantine. It's, <laughs> it's especially hard. I can see it. I can see it. Sometimes it, it shows more than others, but she's an amazing wife, uh, no question. But I wish I could give her more breaks or uh, be a little bit more present because I travel a lot with work. Yeah. Um, so. Um, and you you're working with Michelin right now. I am now. Michelin tires. Sell, selling tires to the government. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then that other wish for those kids would be. Well, um, just godly Christian um, young little friends of theirs. You know, it's it's hard when you don't know and you move across the country. Um, you know, it's they they like to play. You know, there's no question. They love. They're full of energy and they just want to have fun. But. You know, that we find other Christian couples, you know, they yeah. have little kids and yeah. um, that they could get connected and we could connect to. So that and, you know, just continuing um, to uh, be shepherd here at the church with Jane's help and Abby and everyone else. And we've been blessed so far. So, so you know, Mike, Mike has been such a blessing. Not only is he a lot of fun to sip coffee with because we get together usually about once a week and uh, but but. Mike's got all these multi-talents, and one of the things he's doing right now here at the church is he's installing our new video equipment so that we can one day live stream our service, uh, even if we don't have anybody here because everybody's quarantined. Mm. Ah! Uh, well, we'll have to see how that all plays out. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Mike, uh, you know, people can tell by your flabby uh, physique. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> but Mike, you uh, you like to exercise and you do some do. pretty extreme stuff. What do you do? Uh, well, right now I've kind of transitioned a little bit out of running, but um, I've just been a long distance runner for about 20 years. Um, it's weird to think about, but since I was about 15 years long old. Long distance, what does that look like? Uh, well, I've done a couple marathons, probably seven or eight marathons, and just more recently did uh, an ultra. I did um, 35 miles on my 35th birthday. <laughs> Man, yeah. I did 35 pieces of pizza on my 35th <laughs> birthday. It was awesome. Uh, well, I did that after the you, <laughs> I was hungry. There so. you go. Well, your your last uh, marathon got canceled it because did. of the coronavirus. Yeah. That's, Unfortunately, I, I was supposed to do, it's actually called the Bataan um, Death March. It's a memorial race. It sounds cool. Oh. But it's, yeah. a, it's a ruck race in um, White Sands, New Mexico for the military. So it's a, it's a memorial race for... Uh, the World War II veterans that survived um, that uh, hostile act by the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. That, that, what a cool yeah. deal. Yeah. So t tell, tell us, Mike, where do you see, uh, how do you see God at work in your life right now? Well, it's one of those things where sometimes there's the, the ups and the downs, and we're kind of probably at uh, one of the ups periods you know we're we're, we're we're in spite of the quarantine in spite of the quarantine all things considered you know i've had moments recently where i'm sitting down eating dinner with my family and looking at my kids and just seeing how god's blessed us over the years and it's not all been easy but um you know we're we're in a period stage of life where where life is good and um you know just not to take that for granted and those kids they're <laughs> loving life right now because they're Best jungle gym is Dad. at home all the time. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, and I toss them around. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. And those kids, they just, they just know how to have fun mm -hmm. with Dad, and it's a lot of fun to see. So, um, so Mike, uh, we're gonna have to wrap up here in a minute because we're up to, uh, to a hard break. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the lingo for yeah. Yeah. you know the, the big stay tuned? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. but I do you have a favorite? passage of scripture or a place in scripture that you like to go when you are studying the word or just in, in, in prayer? Is there a particular place that you gravitate to? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been going through um, First and Second Timothy uh, quite a bit uh, recently, and I can't, I can't point out to any specific scriptures. You know, one of the things that I've been blessed with um, back to my childhood um, through the youth group, through the church, is uh, a close-knit group of guys that I still keep up with. And there's this uh, online app uh, called the Bible. I think it's called the Bible app. But uh, we're able to connect, but we have this reading plan where we're trying to read through the Bible together as, as a group. And um, so I've, you know, we've been filtering through the Bible, so it's kind of fast-paced. But uh, we just finished First and Second Timothy, and I thought it was pretty awesome. Outstanding, so. outstanding. Well, friends, uh, it, we're going to have to bring Mike back on the show here one of these days. Of course, we got to get Leela. Yeah. I think that's going to require getting Jane to do the interview. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just, I can't wait to get my wife on here. You guys won't want to see my mug again. Yeah. But, uh, but we are anxious to, to uh, meet with Leela, and who knows, maybe someday we'll get to see the kids out here. But, um, Mike... Thank you for yeah. coming in, and thank you for all that you do. You yeah, very quickly yeah. become an important part of this church, and yeah, and sure. um, and we love you, and we love your family, and we love you. And friends, we may be dealing with this coronavirus. We may be dealing with quarantines and an uncertain economy. Uh, these are times like we've not seen before. And I just want to remind you that our hope isn't in the government. Our hope is not in a, even a, a vaccine or some solution to, the, to the, uh, the virus. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, mm. the lover of our souls. Friends, keep your eyes fixed on him. Mm. Don't waste your time in, in uh, just watching Netflix this whole quarantine mm. I, I'll need to give you some psychotherapy if that's necessary. But I would, I would suggest that you make the best use of the time. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the Word. Talk to your neighbors from afar. Let them know about Jesus. Call your grandkids. Tell them how much the Lord loves them. Pray for them. And you know what? We're going to make it through this. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, we're going to make it through this 
with strength. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Mm. Until next time, God bless you. Mm.